Well, I've got King's Gambit and Queen's Gambit to play. And my opponent didn't go d4, d5. So we will carry on with our knights on the edge, pushing h-pawns. Because Harry, Harry likes to get things going nice and early on. Pushing him slowly down the board. Or not so slowly. Might make, all, make, make it all the way to h6 before, you know, being eventually stopped. Um, okay, let's bring a knight out. We might want to follow up with e4 here. I'm not averse to controlling the center as well. Huh. Where do I want this knight? Either of these two squares kind of seems sensible to me. Uh, but no, I'm just going to play this move with gain of tempo. And bring my rook out again. It is the day of the unconventional rooks. You know, there are lots of ways of playing chess. You could, you know, bring out two central pawns, bring out two knights, bring out two bishops, castle, move your queen, put your rooks on d1, put your rook on e1, and go, look, I'm playing chess. But this is real chess, ladies and gentlemen, where you break one or two of those rules, and then you break the rest of them. And look, it works. Your opponents don't always know how best to handle these kind of unconventional approaches. And I still have a big pawn center. I'm threatening to trap this bishop. I have a dangerous kingside attack in the making. Um, I'm not going to say that this is foolproof. Um, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun. I'm threatening here, for example, to take on e6, take on g6, follow up with queen g4. Is that good enough here? Or do I want more? I always want more. I'm quite greedy. Can I go d5? Takes, takes, bishop, f5, g4. Then he can take on c3. I can take back. Bishop e4, f3. I think that's a trapped bishop. I think so. I think this could be trapped bishop number two on tonight's hack attack. Uh, and although my opponent has some interesting ways of trying to play around that, maybe bishop f5, g4, g5, can I simply retreat the knight back and be okay? Maybe, maybe knight to h3 if he plays g5. And then takes, takes, bishop b4, f3. It's still trapped. I think that is a free piece. Okay, queen a5. So his counterplay is based on taking there. So if I take the bishop, he takes, check, take, takes, check. Bishop d2, queen e5. He gets a couple of pawns for the piece. But that's not enough. But is it enough for me? I am... Like I mentioned a few minutes earlier, a few moments earlier, greedy. Is bishop d2 more accurate? Well, I don't see a good move for my opponent after bishop d2. And if I was a betting man, I'd say that there, that there wasn't a particularly obvious good move. Um, and my opponent's gone with queen b4. Well, I am having that bishop off. It is a no more to annoy me on this board. And again, my opponent can grab some pawns here. Maybe one, maybe two. But this time round, I feel like I'm getting much, much, much more play. As I'm gaining time against all of my opponent's pieces. If he takes on c3, I can even recapture with the bishop here. Because I'm hitting the rook on h8. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm just harassing his queen. Having a bit of fun here and there. And everywhere. Queen goes across... Um, and yeah, we're back to just playing some sensible moves. Minute 20 against a minute 5. So, this mini-series, we do have increments. So, two added se uh, seconds for every move that we make. Going to just cover that pawn on h5. I don't want to give that one away. See greedy comments above. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to try and nab that pawn at some moment, castle queen side, in no particular order. And yeah. Apart from that mate in two, 
think things are going okay. Uh, can I trap my opponent's queen is the next question. Bishop g5. Queen h2. Rook h1. And that's a trapped queen. I think. It's got nowhere good to go. Does it make a difference if I play rook g2 or rook h1? I don't think so. I don't think it makes a difference. He can, of course, and he should take on h5 here. Uh, and I simply win a piece. But okay, he bravely attempts to keep hold of the queen. But I think that queen is still a goner. Ooh, a creative solution to the problem for my opponent. And I can win a piece with rook takes queen. But I'm going to go for queen takes f5 because that's not only a rook that I'm threatening on c8. It's actually checkmate. And you know what's better than winning the game? It's checkmate. Will my opponent see this coming? He can obviously play knight takes d3 check. And he does. But now if he attempts to save his queen with queen takes f2... It will mean an immediate end to the game. But, frankly, the alternatives are not a lot better. E6 is actually by far his best move. By far. And he has somehow found a way to carry on fighting. But, surely... I don't believe how he saved his pieces here. I mean, I... I don't believe it. How many, what am I up here? Still a piece, right? Three, two... Yeah, still a piece up. Where is the end of this game? I mean, there, there just has to be something beautiful and final. And I don't see it. And I do appear to be throwing away my lead on the clock. Uh, okay, let's go back to taking some pieces. Why didn't I play knight d5? I'm such an idiot. Oh dear. Well, knight d5 would have just finished the game. And now we appear to... Oh, I mean, I'm down to less than five seconds. Alright, bear with me as I attempt to carry on commentating in at least some sense. Whilst not losing on time. Uh... Alright, oh, I can grab that. Look, it's a mate tactic. And it's a mate. Mate tactics followed by mates are my favourite mate tactics. And we will give the guy a rematch. Because I think that was a decent game. Oh, and he does too. GG. Isn't everyone polite on chess.com today? They're, they're polite most days. Okay, D4, B5. I have been asked to play. Uh, I forget the name of that opening. I did write it down somewhere, but... Um, I imagine it's called the awesome, because it looks pretty good. If I go a6, we're transposing back into a um, St. George's variation, or a line thereof. So, I kind of want to do something more Benko Benoni-ish, and offer this pawn up, and follow up with a quick bishop g7 and c5. Um, because I think it's more in the spirit of this opening. I think he can safely take that pawn, because now queen a5 check knight bc3, and his knight on there covers everything. But, uh, I'm not certain I like castle so much, because after knight takes queen b6, how does he protect both of these pieces? Because he can go bishop e3. Okay, so his idea might be bishop e3, and if I play bishop takes, he can take back and capture b5. But what happens now after e5? He can go knight f5. Well, we have chaos. And I am happy to allow this chaos. Ooh, hang on. I thought queen takes b5, knight takes g7, king f8 trapped the knight. However, however, however... It may turn out that queen takes b5 is met by knight d6. Okay. And if queen f6 here, knight d6, and I lose a piece. Okay. Feels like 
I might have lost a little bit of control with this opening. But, then again, I've just won two of my opponent's pieces, for which he's only got one. Granted, the piece that he won of mine was my queen. Uh, but who ever said that a bishop and knight wasn't worth a queen? And look, I've got an open A file for my rook. Hmm. Not completely convinced about this game. Uh, can I take that pawn? Uh, maybe? I kind of think I should take material where I can. Because at the moment he has a queen and pawn for two pieces. Um... I do need these pawns to be able to do something. Knight d4 loses a piece. Oh, I don't like my comeback chances here. He says running away. Oh, what about if I go here? Kind of looks more threatening. By more threatening it also looks bad, but hey. In the meantime, my opponent is doing incredibly sensible things. Like developing and keeping a safe castled king. And who can blame him, frankly? What's the time situation? Do I have any comebacks there? My opponent is down to less than two minutes. But since I'm at a minute 30, that, that might factor in as a randomising possibility later on. Um, ooh, he's coming into d6. Ugh, ugh. Mm. Let's bring the knight back. That prevents any kind of knight g5 shenanigans, and after knight d6, I can meet it with bishop c6. It's not quite the counterplay I had in mind, but I'll tell you what we're going to see. I'm going <clears> to <throat> stop waffling quite so much and attempt to pick the pace up, uh, he says, whilst moving very slowly, uh, in order to muddy the waters and create complications. Because I think I do need to be able to put some kind of pressure on my opponent. And if that pressure can't be um, traditional pressure, positional pressure, it might as well be giving away a piece pressure. My opponent has played this game fantastically. Uh, admittedly, I have made one or two mistakes, but it has been almost flawlessly punished by my opponent. Um, okay, we're really going into blitz mode, but I don't anticipate even for a nanosecond that it's going to be enough. Let's run away, run around with these rooks anyway, because no game was ever won from resigning. But I'm kind of like to think that just no game was ever won from here. But hey. My opponent continues to do only the most sensible of sensible things. A uh, little bit slowly, maybe, but meh. Happy to let that pawn go. Uh, oh, we've got a plan. Push a pawn. Hashtag push a pawn. Uh, push a pawn while you can, because you'll never know when the day will come when you don't have any pawns left. It will be there sooner than you think. I remember the good old days when I had eight pawns. Now, now many, many moves on. I have but one. No, I have three, but only one that I care about. I mean, I don't really care about it because I'm going to get mated, but it is a past pawn. One of my favourite kind of pawns. Mm. Not really getting my opponent that short on the clock. New plan, tempt his rook away and give back rank mate. I mean, we are doing better than I thought we would. Uh... Is that a tactic? 
I mean, it sets up the tactic, queen takes f4, bishop there, but not really. Uh, I just want to keep him thinking whilst... Um, so I really want the the complications to set in. Uh, just as my opponent's getting really short on time. So is rook there a good move? Is bishop there a good move? Let's go rook there. Oh wow, he gives up something. Okay, I am completely confused by these ten of events. Uh, all the component endings are drawn, guys. I mean, I know this should be a very comfortable ending, but... Man, that was a, a lot of material to give away. I mean, it's definitely winning for my opponent here. Like, 100%. But was this really the easiest way to win it? Uh, maybe maybe it was. Maybe my opponent's made a right decision. But, um, you know, we've got a little... Hang on, but he's allowed me this with check. I mean, this was my only plan. And I'm going to be able to stop that pawn. Um, I even have the... Yeah. I mean, king goes back, for example. I can even just do it all with check. And then once that pawn goes, that's a, a sad end. I'm going to say good game to my opponent, because... Just a few moves back, he had that game all under control. Uh, it's pretty brutal there, but yeah. Alright, let's see. Next challenge coming in from Pure Defiance.